I'm Dr. Bill Dorfman. Now you may recognize me from ABC's hit show Extreme Makeover or the CBS show The Doctors, but what I'm really passionate about, not TV, dentistry. I love dentistry. I love it from the second I wake up every day till I go to bed at night, and I love making people smile. You know, in dental school, they taught you how to fix a tooth, and I thought, eh, that's pretty cool. But I found that when you fix a lot of teeth, you fix a smile. And when you fix a smile, you fix a life. And nothing is better than that. Now, they've called me America's dentist. I don't know how they came up with that, honestly. But you know what? I'm proud to be a dentist. And I'm really proud that a lot of kids reach out to me on a day-to-day -day basis and say, hey, Dr. Bill, I want to be a cosmetic dentist too. That never happened before. You know, I've had a really, really long career. We're almost hitting 40 years of being a dentist. And my very first celebrity patient was Esther Williams. Now, a lot of you won't remember who she was because you weren't even born. She was MGM's biggest star. Esther was so big, she's the only star in the world on the MGM lot that had two, not one, two dressing rooms. She had wet days and dry days. Esther was the actress that starred in all the films where they had swimming and diving and water ballet. Like she made water ballet a thing. And Esther came into my office when I was 29 years old and looked me in the eye and said, doctor, are you old enough to be doing this to me? And I took care of Esther till the very last day. In fact, a month before she passed, she said, you know, you're on the lifetime plan. You're not going anywhere before me. And I said, Esther, I promise I'll be there. And I think one of the most fulfilling things for me as a dentist was being able to treat people for years and years and years, and not just the patient, but then their husband or wife or partner or kids. And you know, the whole family comes in. It's just been an amazing experience. Where else in the world am I gonna meet Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Hopkins, Katy Perry, Eva Longoria, Hugh Jackman. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I never meet these people. My career has exceeded every expectation I ever had, and it continues to day by day by day. It's been amazing. Everybody asked me like, how'd you become a dentist? I, I don't know. I think the writing was on the wall. I was a little kid. I was playing in my living room. I fell down. I hit my baby teeth so hard that instead of knocking them out, I knocked them back up into the gums and that I had to have multiple surgeries for years and years to kind of correct it so that my permanent teeth would grow in normally. Now, most normal kids would be scared to death of the dentist. After what I went through, I was not a normal kid. I actually was so intrigued by what was going on that I started like hanging out in the dental office and just watching, I, here I was like four or five years old, watching the dentist do other surgeries. And at that time I had this epiphany. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna help people out like this. I'm gonna do this one day. And it never wavered. So in a way it was kind of fortunate because I went all through high school and college and everything already knowing what I was going to do. And of all the things I do professionally, dentistry is still the thing where I really feel like I'm in my element. You know, if I had to reflect back on what was the pivotal moment that really launched my career, I would say there's three of them. Number one, when I started practicing in Century City, the last thing Century City Beverly Hills needed was another cosmetic dentist. what I do? I went ahead and I found the five most successful cosmetic dentists in Beverly Hills. I called them up and I asked if I could shadow them. Now, in those days, it wasn't even called shadowing. It was observing. People never even did it. But I went in there and I watched them do everything. And when other students had come in and, and kind of asked questions or watched to shadow, they kind of just went into the operatory and watched them do dentistry. I didn't do that. 
I wanted to see how they greeted the patient. I wanted to see the intake forms. I wanted to see how they brought the patients into the treatment room. How did they talk to the patient? How did they present the treatment? You know, what did they say to the patient? How did they answer their questions? Then how did they treat the patient? And then when they were done, not only how did they say goodbye, but how did they get them up to the front desk and collect money? You know, I mean, if I'm going to be a dentist, I want to make money doing this too. So I watched the whole thing soup to nuts. And then I took the best of those five dentists and made one practice. And honestly, within two years, my practice was more successful than any of theirs. The second thing, there was a woman I went to high school with, Susan Hartzler. Susan Hartzler was a publicist. I didn't know what a publicist was. She came into my office to get her teeth cleaned. She said, you know what? You need a publicist. I'm like, I do? What do you do? She said, I'm going to make you famous. I'm like, okay, yeah, fat chance, right? Lo and behold, within two months, she had me named as the best cosmetic dentist in LA. Now, that may not sound like a big deal, but having it in LA Magazine was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in patient referrals to me. I mean, that was crazy. And then the third thing I would say is having a great mentor. We lost him. His name was Jeffrey Golub Evans, and he was the most amazing dentist ever. He's the past president of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. He's a Renaissance man. He's an artist. He's a painter. He's a sculptor. He's a dentist. He taught me how to take everything that my publicist was doing and grow it even bigger and bigger and bigger. Because you know what? You can be a really talented, skilled dentist, and I've seen them. But if people don't know who you are or where you are or what kind of work you do, you're going to sit there doing nothing. He taught me how to use PR to really build my practice. But the thing that made me happier than anything was not just building my practice, but being able to be so successful that I got to a position where I could help a lot of other people too. And that made it like the whole package. I was very fortunate. About 25 years ago, I was asked to be a mentor at a program that was a motivational leadership program for high school and college kids. And I came every summer and I spoke and I kind of told them my story because I've had a little bit of an atypical dental career, right? Well, 14 years ago, the founder of that program passed away. I thought, you know, this is too important to die with him. So we resurrected it. We call it LEAP. It's a motivational leadership program for high school and college kids. And we do this every summer at UCLA. Now, typically, it's a live program with live students and live speakers. Unfortunately, this year it wasn't. We did it as a virtual program, but guess what? Normally, we have 450 students. This year, we had over 1,000 students attend. And we had great speakers. Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. Apollo Ono, the most decorated Winter Olympian in history. Um, I mean, uh, just a bunch of other really Paula Abdul every year. Paula will never, ever, ever miss leap. We also had a young guy, Taylor Zachar Perez, who just before his movie came out on Netflix, and I think it's the number one movie on Netflix right now, it's called The Kissing Booth, came and spoke to us, and he was phenomenal. So it's a great program where we teach kids the skills that they need to be successful in life. We teach them how to network. We teach them, actually, we do a program called How to Be a Gentleman, where we teach men dating etiquette, eating etiquette, job etiquette. Um, we do uh, how to write a resume, how to apply for a job. Uh, I mean, on and on and on. If you want more information, go to www.leapfoundation.com and you can see what we do there. But it's phenomenal. And hopefully in 2021, we'll be back live. It's been at UCLA for the last 13 years and it's been pretty phenomenal. Right about 1989, tooth whitening started. And we were doing a lot of it, but the systems out there were horrible. The taste was bad. The packaging was worse. The, I mean, it just wasn't a great experience. 
And it's really funny because in my life, there have been so many times when I honestly, truly just philanthropically wanted to give back and it ended up like making me a lot of money. And this was one of those. I was at the gym working out one day and this woman, I'll never forget, her name was Cynthia Hearn, came up to me and said, hey doc, do you wanna help raise money for children's cancer research? I said, yeah, what'd I do? She said, well, you are a dentist, right? I said, yeah. She goes, and you're single, right? I'm like, yeah. She goes, well, we're doing a bachelor auction and we'd like to auction you off for charity. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, we're gonna have a thousand women and we're gonna sell 10 guys for charity. I'm like, okay, whatever. Honestly, the auction was stupid, but what wasn't stupid was a guy in line next to me became a lifelong best friend. We're still best friends. His name was Robert Heyman, and Robert was the son of Fred Heyman, who literally invented and created Beverly Hills. He also had a line of cosmetics called Giorgio Cosmetics. And Robert knew cosmetics, he knew marketing, he knew manufacturing, and together he and I started a company called Discus Dental. And our first product was Night White. And we sold Night White for many years until right around 2000 when I and my company invented Zoom. Okay, not Zoom video conferencing, I wish it had been, but Zoom tooth whitening, which actually became pretty big too. And um, we literally grew Discus Dental from zero with no investors, with no money. I mean, I, I, I took out like I took out money on my credit cards in the beginning to, to pay. We had like two employees and four. Then they, I grew that company with Robert from zero to one point three billion dollars in sales until we sold it. And the crazy thing is, I told you a little bit about my Leap program. Well, at Leap. We talk to kids and we teach them something we call the 10 culture. Where's my phone? Um, and I, I have to show you this because it's, uh... you see, kids come to Leap and a lot of the kids that come in, they come from nothing. I mean, they, they've got no support. They've got nobody in their corner. And the first thing I say to kids when they come in is I say, listen, on a scale of one to 10, with one being the lowest and 10 being the highest, how many of you woke up this morning and put a 10 on your forehead? Kids will raise their hand. They'll say, how many of you didn't put a 10 on your forehead? And then kids will raise their hand. And I look out and I say, who picked the number? You. Did you have to take a test? Did you have to do anything at all? No. So why wouldn't you pick a 10? So we do this whole thing where we call it the 10 culture, where I have them repeat after me. I say, I am, I am a 10, a 10. I make them walk like a 10, talk like a 10, act like a 10, but most importantly, surround themselves with other kids that are 10s. Because if you're trying to be a 10 and all your friends are twos, what do you think happens? Your number goes down pretty quick, right? Now, ironically, we grew that company, Discus Dental, from zero to $1.3 billion in sales, and we sold our company on 10, 10, 10 at 10 a.m. We sold the company to, to, to Philips. We give these to all the kids when they go to, to, not because of the day I sold my company, but just to remind them to be a 10. But how ironic, the, the merger documents came in at 9 a.m. in the morning, and I waited till exactly 10 to push send, and boom, and he grew and grew and grew. And we were at, you know, our first year we did 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, 16, and we kept growing and growing and growing. We were at like 75 million in sales and we couldn't break it. There were Crest White Strips and all these other things. So at that point, right at that point, I get this phone call one day from ABC saying, hey, we've got this new thing, it's called reality TV, and we'd like you to be on it. Well, I didn't know anything about it and I thought, yeah, I don't know. And I was really, kind of concerned that they were going to kind of exploit these patients. But I went and I met with Howard Schultz, the creator of the show, not Starbucks Howard, the other Howard. And I realized these guys really had their heart in the right place. And so, you know, I signed on to do this. 
And I think probably, and I tell kids at LEAP, there will be times in your life that we call life-defining moments, right? And sometimes you plan them, sometimes you don't. I had the biggest life-defining moment in my life with Extreme Makeover. We shot the pilot. The pilot got huge ratings, huge. And then they picked us up for 22 episodes. First patient, first episode in the first season needed 20 veneers, 10 uppers, 10 lowers. Now at the time we were charging $1,500 a two. So that's a $30,000 case. And I was to send you know, an invoice to ABC before I started. So I send the invoice to ABC and they had a meltdown. And they called me up and they said, Doc, are you kidding? $30,000? Like we didn't budget that for teeth. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? They said, well, can you do three teeth? I'm like, what, like every other tooth? I'm like, no, I can't do three teeth. And so I had a life-defining moment and I said, listen, now you have to understand on Extreme Makeover, there were probably 15 plastic surgeons, weight trainers, hairstylists, make all of them got paid. The only one who didn't get paid, the dentist. Because what I did was I said, listen, I'll do all the dentistry for free under the following conditions. Number one, I'm the only dentist. Why? I didn't want them to get some hack dentist on there and then people thought maybe I did bad work, right? I wanted to control the whole thing. Number two, Zoom whitening gets featured in every episode. So number three, you need to mention my lab. I made Da Vinci veneers famous because I didn't want to do dentistry for free and then have a fifteen dollars to $20,000 lab bill. ABC said, yes, yes, yes. Today, ne that would never happen. Never, ever, ever happen, right? So we go ahead and we film the first episode. I'm not gonna lie. I watched the first two or three episodes. I was so bad on TV, they should have fired me. But you know what? I was at least smart enough to know how bad I was. So what I do? I took acting classes, hosting classes, teleprompting classes. You know, I, I worked with a media trainer. I let that lady beat me up. She would, you know, put somebody next to me that was a professional interviewer and ask me questions. If I didn't sit up straight, she'd pop me in the head and she moved my shoulders. She taught me how to be the best me that I could be on TV. Did it pay off? Well, our company went from 2 million to 4 million to 8 million to 16 million. We plateaued at 76 million. The first year I was on Extreme Makeover, we went from 76 million in sales to 101. From 101 to 136. And the last year I was on the show, we did almost $200 million in sales. So, okay, ABC didn't pay me. It's okay. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. And then I'll tell you, the biggest, biggest, biggest day in my life professionally was on 10, 10, 10 because I always knew as a dentist, I'd be comfortable. I knew I'd be able to support my family and my kids and all that. I never thought in my wildest dreams that one day I could push one button on my computer and it would change my life. And you know, people that say money doesn't matter, let me tell you something. It doesn't make you happy, that's true. Does it matter? Heck yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, it's never going to make somebody happy. I mean, if you're not happy, you're not happy. It doesn't matter how much money you have. But I will tell you this. It's really, really hard to be happy when you are broke ass poor. And I grew up broke ass poor, so I know what it feels like. And for me to sit in front of my computer and push a button and see my bank account light up like that, was like an, it was like an, an unreal experience, an out of body experience. I mean, it, it, I can't even describe it. I just remember sitting at my desk, looking out the window and you know, my eyes welled up and I called my folks and it was just, it was life changing. It really was. And um, you know, the next day I went into the office right here where I'm sitting, actually right here, I sat here. We did an all hands on deck meeting. I had everybody in my office in front of me. I told them what happened. I said, these are my new hours. 
I, and I said, I'm working exactly 20 hours a week instead of 40 or 60. And I'm gonna spend a lot more time doing philanthropic work. I'm gonna spend a day doing LEAP. And I kind of laid it out and I've stuck to that ever since 2010. So it's, it's literally been 10 years um, and it's been pretty amazing. The best advice that I have for young dentists starting out is copy genius, copy genius, copy genius, copy genius. That's all you have to do. Go out and find dentists that are doing the kind of dentistry that you want to do and observe them and do it better. You know, every time I go and I speak at a dental school, the first thing I tell the dental students there is this. Dentistry has exceeded every expectation I ever had by far. I'm not standing in front of you to brag. I don't need to do that. And by the way, I never get paid to speak to dental students. I always do it for free. I want to stand in front of you and tell you all the things that I did in my career that made me successful so you can copy it and do it better. I want you to use my career as a springboard for your career. And if I can show you stuff that worked for me and you can do that and do it better, all the more power to you. Because you know what? I really don't feel like dentistry is a competitive thing. 50% of the people out there don't even go to the dentist. Get them in your office. Figure out what you need to do to get them in your office. I actually did it so I could practice dentistry. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm 61 years old right now. I'm in better physical shape right now than I was in my 20s. I'm the oldest guy ever shot shirtless by GQ magazine. They just did a whole layout on me like a few weeks ago. In fact, I got the cover of this magazine last year and I would challenge any dental student to do this, especially when you're 61, right? So here's my advice. If you want to practice dentistry for a long, long time, stay healthy, work out, stay in good shape, stay fit, because it is a very, very physically strenuous profession. And the only way you're gonna be able to do it for a long time and enjoy it is if you stay healthy and stay fit. So one of the things that we really wanted to do was try and reach more people for LEAP. And we had so much great content from all the people I'd interviewed at Leap that I started a podcast. And the original like five or six episodes were pre-taped at Leap with Anthony Hopkins and Mark Wahlberg and Eva Longoria and, and Eric Garcetti. But after that, we started interviewing a lot of people. It's called Meet the Mentor. So believe it or not, we're number one in Yemen. We're number two in Iceland, we're number three in Finland, and we're number 94th out of 47,000 podcasts in the U.S. And the thing that differentiates my podcast from others is it isn't like I just asked Jason Alexander about his career. What I want to know is if I'm a young student listening to you, tell me what I need to do. Give me a roadmap and tell me what I need to do to have a career to emulate yours. And I think that's the thing that differentiates the podcast and has made it so popular and people love it. And we've had really, really great buy-in. You know, the, the cool thing about Leap 2 is it's great to help change these kids' lives. 60% of the kids that come to the program come for free. These are A-plus students that come from impoverished family, we go out and we raise money so they can come to the program for free because they couldn't afford $2,500 to go to UCLA for a week. And every single one of my celebrity clients that has come and spoken at LEAP, they do it for free. We couldn't afford to pay Mark Wahlberg or Anthony Hopkins or Michael Strahan or, or any of these people to come and speak at this program. They do it for free because like me, they believe that our future is in our youth and they're there to support them and help them grow. Number one, don't wait for opportunities in life, make them. You know, you can sit around and wait forever. And I mean, if I meet another kid that tells me they're waiting for the universe to show them something, I gotta tell you something. Have you looked outside? The universe is pretty busy right now. It doesn't care about you. Number two, 
When you get an opportunity in life, don't take it, master it. And there's a big difference. Listen, I told you when I got on Extreme Makeover, I was horrible on TV. But instead of being horrible, I learned how to do it. Same thing with Discus Dental. When we started Discus Dental, I sat in those board meetings. I felt like an idiot. They don't teach you EBITDA and graphs and all this stuff in dental school. They teach you teeth. And I'm sitting in these board meetings going, what is this? So instead of sitting there like an idiot, what did I do? I went back to UCLA. I took ex extension classes. I took accounting. I took bookkeeping. I took business classes so I could be a bigger part of my business. Don't just take an opportunity. Master it. It's so important. And you can do it in other ways like media. So here's a fun story. Katy Perry's makeup artist Johnny comes to me and says, Doc, we need to make a grill for the Dark Horse video. I'm like, awesome. He goes, yeah, it's gotta have rhinestones. And like, I'm like, awesome. It's gotta be really cool. I go, what's my budget? He said, $1,500. I'm like, are you kidding? I said, we're not gonna make a $1,500 grill. I'm gonna make a million dollar grill. He goes, what? I go, I wanna be in the Guinness World Book of Records. And by the way, I am. <laughs> and so I called Cheryl. She owns 14 Carats in Beverly Hills. It's the biggest jewelry store there. We took out a million dollars in jewels on consignment. I made Katy Perry's grill for the Dark Horse video. It was a million dollar grill by Dr. Bill. It got me my second Guinness World Book record and it has been seen over, I think, 15 billion times in the video. So don't take an opportunity, master it. If you are a young dentist or just a dentist that's out there practicing and you really want to find a way to kind of bump your practice to the next level, honestly, the best thing you could do is copy genius. And you've got to understand and master social media. It's not going away, just like COVID. It's going to be there a long, long time. Follow me on Instagram. Not because I need more followers. I have almost a million. It's not that. I follow 10 to 15 really, really successful dentists and I'm copying them. So by copying me, you're copying more genius than even I'm copying. So copy me and do it better than me. You know, I mean, the other thing is too, you need to find what you love to do in dentistry. Dentistry is such an amazing field. If you love endo or ortho or perio or pedo, be the best that you can be at that. And again, do it by copying genius. But I think if you really want to have a fulfilling career, the best thing you could do is get to a point where you can just give back to and find a way that you can do that. You know, I, I met this kid once and I'll never forget. He said, every day I try to make the world better and I'm poor, I don't have anything. But what I do is I walk up to people and just smile. So just smile.